And now Dr. Andre Alonzo joins us as part of American Graduate Day on PBS. Dr. Alonzo has been CEO of the Baltimore City Public Schools for five years now. Five years. Sir, thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Focusing on the issue of graduation rates and, and dropouts, there's some things that I guess are obvious. Some things may need more attention. What, what have you seen? Well, we have been unbelievably lucky here in Baltimore over the past five years in seeing a huge increase in the graduation rate and, a, and an extraordinary decline in the number of dropouts. Uh, when I arrived in uh, 2007, 2008, the previous year, roughly 2,800 kids had dropped out of school. Uh, last year, we were down to 1,100, uh, roughly 55, 56 percent decline, which uh, was from the beginning the most important thing for me to tackle. I was asked on my first day on the job, how should I hold myself accountable? And I said, you know, you have to hold me accountable by, by stemming what I thought as a hemorrhage in terms of kids dropping out of school. Are those kids who aren't dropping out graduating, or are they in, you know, sort of a continuing... Well, uh, right, right now, we uh, last year, for the first time, Maryland had a, a cohort graduation rate. And of the kids who enter school in 2007, 2008, uh, 60, roughly 67 percent had already graduated in Baltimore, and 87 percent of them had either graduated or were still in school. So we had lost 13 percent of that cohort. Uh, four years in. Uh, we're awaiting the next set of numbers. They don't come out until the first or second week of, of October, but we're incredibly hopeful that that number is going to be in the, in the mid to high 70s, since, you know, that would represent a huge thing for the city. Uh, you know, the word when I stepped on the job was that if we were looking at cohort, roughly half the kids were graduating, which is a kind of national number. So to get it into the 70s is, is representative of enormous work on what, the part of schools and communities. Tell me about the work. What, what's, what's been successful and maybe what is transferable to other um, urban districts and, and other types of school systems? Well, the, the most important thing, of course, is to understand what is happening with every single child. Uh, uh, the second most important thing, I think, is to, to have schools... Uh, classrooms organized in order to meet the needs of those child children and 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 then there has to be a clear accountability system around what's happening with kids and in Baltimore it's been not only about academics it's been about operations as well uh, we have a system where schools get funding on the basis of the number of kids so all of a sudden you know something that wasn't necessarily felt deeply at an operational level at the school uh, became uh, something very important. Uh, we we chase the kids. Uh, we engage community-based organizations in, in an exercise twice a year to reach out to every single child who has dropped out. Uh, we have created schools that have far more flexibility around time, uh, around the hours, around the programs for the children. And we are constantly testing our practices to see where are we falling short in terms of making sure that the kids are getting to the finish line. How, how does that flex the timing flexibility work in practice? So maybe somebody ha had to drop out uh, because they had to work. And, and part of what we're seeing is that there is a, there is a myth, which is, which is partly true, that many of the kids who drop out are dropping out because they're struggling academically. But what we find is that you have many kids who are not struggling academically who drop out, and then there are kids who are struggling academically who have enormous resilience. So uh, what's going on in the family, what's going on in the home, uh, what's going on in the neighborhood around transportation, for example, all those things matter. So we have tried to create settings where if a kid can only be in school uh, late in the afternoon, that's when we provide a program for them. If there's a need for acceleration because uh, 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 a young adult feels that they've already gotten a little too old and they would have to be in school two, three more years in order to graduate, then we, we double the time that they're in school uh, in order to make sure that they feel that there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel for them. What, what's been the impact of the HSAs, the high school assessment tests that are required for graduation in Maryland, it, it on the surface, sets a, a barrier 
Um, what's been the impact in the city? Well, what I have, what I saw in the city is what I predicted, which is the same thing that I saw elsewhere, which is that when the barrier is raised, schools organize to meet that barrier. I had seen it in Boston and Massachusetts around the introduction of, of uh, end of high school tests in that state. And here in Baltimore and in Maryland, what we've seen is that with, with higher uh, barriers to graduation, uh, what, you know, the dropout rate has been reduced. Uh, uh, it just makes it so much more critical to do what needs to be done anyway, and uh, schools have organized to meet, to meet that, that higher burden. I've seen some criticism in, in newspaper letters to the editor, that sort of thing, from people at individual schools who say that they're being forced to graduate kids by the central office who shouldn't graduate. Does that happen? That, you know, what I find interesting is that we, we now have external criteria that proves that kids have met certain standards. Uh, so with the, with the external criteria being there, then I don't understand the argument about being forced to graduate kids. Kids are having to pass three or four end of high school tests. They have to meet all kinds of different state criteria. What we are pushing schools to do is, is to go that extra mile with children. And you were watching American Graduate Day on MPT.